Data Platform team salutes you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Neural Lake framework to quickly build an indexer. Let's have an overview look at what we're building today. We will create an indexer that will watch for the changes in a specified account or a list of accounts and will print those changes in the terminal window. Nothing complex, yet useful. First of all, we will design the command line interface for our application. We want to pass key accounts, which will take an account name. We would like to pass multiple of them to provide a list of account names. Then we need to provide the block height to start indexing from. And finally, pass the chain ID. Of course, the design might be better, but I found the proposed one as one of the shortest to implement for a tutorial. Moving on to the code at last, let's create a project. Let's add all the dependencies we need. In the real world, we don't always know the full list of dependencies in the beginning, but it is a tutorial, and we are cheating a little bit. Once Cargo Tom is filled, we can move on to the next phase. We are starting with implementing a command line interface design we have created earlier. Importing libraries we will be using, defining the structure for command line arguments we are going to receive in our application. Defining the main function. First of all, we make it asynchronous. We are using Tokyo runtime. In the beginning, we are reading the arguments passed to the application. It is time to set up the Near Lake Framework stream. You can consider this code as a boilerplate, instantiating the structure lake config, converting the received arguments into the proper config parameters, initiating the near lake framework stream. We create a busy loop that is going to receive a streamer message from the framework and pass it to an asynchronous function called handle streamer message. We're going to create it later. Before proceeding with the creating a handler function, we need to temporarily switch our focus and have a closer look at the structure streamer message we are receiving. We want to figure out what we are looking for in our application. The structure streamer message artificially represents the entire block of the near blockchain. It includes everything that appears in the block, including the local receipts that are not available through the JSON RPC. In this tutorial we are interested in state changes that can be found in a shard. State changes structure is an alias to a vector of state change with cost u, which in turn consists of two fields, the cost and the value. The value is a quite big num with a number of variants. The most important thing for us right now is that every variant has a field called account ID. And this account ID means the account was affected by this state change record. Now we are creating a function handle streamer message that receives the streamer message from the Near Lake framework and our list of watched account names, so we know what we are looking for in each block. We are making a separate function to check if the state change affects any of the accounts we are watching. Now we can finish the handler function. If the check function returns true, we print the message that contains the block height where the change appeared and the type of the change. And just for the sake, we'll print the entire state change record, affecting the account. And looks like we have finished. It is time to run the application to ensure that it works. And the easiest way to trigger the state change is to send some nears to the account we are watching or from it. We need AWS credentials in order to connect to the Near Lake Framework S3 bucket. Generating the credentials, storing them in the home folder and moving on to a near world.
for the demo purpose, I'm going to create a testnet account via Near Wallet. Let's go to the Near Explorer to get the fresh testnet block height. Now we can transfer some NEARs from our testnet account to trigger the stage. And now we can run our application to see everything is working. And that's all folks. The source code for this tutorial is available on GitHub. You can find the link below in the description. Thanks for your attention.